So what is my opinion on the Lenovo graphics dock? I think it offers a super convenient and inexpensive choice to people that want portability when they're on the go. And then when they're done and they have to go do that work back at home or back at the office, they can have that power. Similarly, it accelerates graphic workloads. It's going to have that extra power and performance. The GTX 1050 in here does get pretty powerful. Like I was editing a video using DaVinci Resolve and the timeline smoothness was perfect. Same thing goes with Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop. All those things are going to take advantage of the extra performance that comes with a dedicated GPU. Couple that with the three USB ports. Two of them support at least five gigabits per second, uh, as well as the gigabit ethernet on the back. The two DisplayPort 1.2s, as well as the HDMI 2.0 out. So that'll support up to three different displays, driving them at at least 4K 60, which is incredible. If you have a G-Sync or a FreeSync monitor, you can also take advantage of those with the latest graphic drivers. And so this thing is sort of a Swiss Army knife in a way, if you have an Ultrabook that happens to have a Thunderbolt 3 port. Now, with that being said, if you have a MacBook Pro, will this thing work? Yes, it will. On bootcamp, it does take a little bit of finagling. I had to get rid of the driver for, or I had to disable the driver for Bluetooth and for uh, Ethernet just to get um, this thing connected without getting like a blue screen of death. But on a Windows Ultra Portable, this thing will work just fine. All you need is something that has a 40 gigabit per second connection. I have not tested it on the 20 gigabit connections from laptops from a couple years ago and a couple models that are still out today, but it might work. I'm curious to know. Um, I didn't see a ton of videos on YouTube about this, so I wanted to make a, a video talking about what I've had, you know, for most of this year and what's allowed me to play games and get a lot of work done without having to spend a ton of money until I actually had the money to get MacBook Pro. So let's change gears a bit and look at some gaming. We're going to test out a couple different modern titles. Let's get started with Borderlands 3. You can see the frame rate is actually pretty great. I'm getting about 30 to 40 frames per second, sometimes more. I have settings on high and I'm playing at a 1080p resolution. In my previous video on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I was playing at a higher resolution, but I was downscaling the resolution modifier. And so it, it was rendering at a lower resolution. And so it's really good performance uh, coming out of this little machine. Couple that with the fact that your CPU doesn't have to uh, run at a lower clock because the GPU is causing too much power or too much heat and you really get to see this thing flex its muscles. Play this on something like a Dell XPS 13 with a 6-core processor and you might get even better results. Now one thing to note is that the game bar is not accurately displaying the clock speed. It's actually boosting up to anywhere from 2.8 to 3.2 gigahertz. It's just not showing in this example. I did check on throttle stop and that's where I saw that it was actually boosting up to uh, the appropriate amounts. And that's my sacrifice quarter for the day! I'm gonna suffer my blade on your spine! Now moving on to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, you can see I'm getting the same things, about 30 to 40 frames per second, sometimes more, running at 1080p on high settings. You can also set this thing to medium settings if you want even better performance. This game, despite really taxing the CPU and GPU hardware, is running really well. I did a slight boost in the clock speeds uh, for this test, and I do have auto fan speed turned off and I am setting my own fan curves. 
and I can leave a link to MSI Afterburner which works on the graphics dock to control the GPU. I also use Throttle Stop to make sure I'm getting the most performance out of my CPU and I might recommend that as well. I'll leave a link down in the description. It's also cheaper than the competition. The cheapest thing besides this is 400 bucks. That's the Sonic Breakaway box with the 560 in it, and that thing is not as powerful as this one, as this is, and not nearly as portable either. It's a little bit of a box shape. This thing is a pound or less. It's less than an inch thick, and it has that right combination of things that you need to get work done. For example, I have a gigabit connection here at my house, and this thing gets 900 plus down, which is crazy. I know most laptops now don't have an Ethernet jack, don't have a ton of USB ports. And so when you need to get work done, when you need to game, you want something that's convenient, that will work with just one single cable. And this is it. Uh, of course, you know, sound down in the comments below. Would you get something like this? Would you prefer something more powerful? Do you just want a laptop like a MacBook Pro? that has that dedicated GPU built inside. I noticed that the, uh, the GPU inside of here, you know, which this thing is super expensive, is a little bit more powerful than the one in, in the eGPU, of course, but you're also paying a ton more for it. And for those applications that take advantage of CUDA cores, you're not gonna really get that with something that has an AMD GPU in it. And so that's about it for this video. If you like it, drop a like. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have a ton of content coming up soon and I want you all to be a part of the journey. So that's it for today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.